Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem of an interesting type. A problem with parameters. We have x minus the square root of a minus x squared equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x. a is a given number, so for all values of a, we're going to be solving this equation for x. I hope that makes sense. Now, this is a type of problem that I think would be very hard for AI to solve, but I could be wrong. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look. Before we start solving the problem, by usual means, I'd like to first write it in a different form. So I wanna go ahead and put the radical on one side by itself and bring the x and one together so we can write it like this. Now in this equation, I want you to pay attention to two things. First of all, x minus one is the square root of something. And as you know, if x is real, square root of something needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So this, this implies that x minus one is greater than or equal to zero, which implies that x is greater than or equal to one. Great. That's something we need to record because our solutions have to satisfy all these criteria and we have more to come, okay? The second thing we need to look at is the expression inside the radical. That also needs to be greater than or equal to zero. Why? Because otherwise the result is not going to be a real number and you don't want that. So this is a little bit more complicated because it seems to involve two variables, but notice x is the variable, a is the parameter or the given number, okay? For example, if a is 5, you, you'll get an inequality. a is 3, another inequality, a family of inequalities, in other words. Does that make sense? Great. So, let's go ahead and isolate what from here? x squared. Okay, this implies x squared is less than or equal to a. I'm going to just save this for now and for later use. And now we can go ahead and square both sides here. Okay, let's do that. That allows us to get rid of the radical. And now this gives us a minus x squared equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. And if you put everything on the same side, you get 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus a equals 0. Yay, this is a quadratic equation and we know how to solve it, right? There's a formula. But before we get into the formula, maybe we should find what is called the discriminant. You know why? Because if you want real solutions, then you do need discriminant or delta to be greater than or equal to zero. So that's what's needed, right? So how do we achieve that? Easy. We're just gonna set the delta equal to what it is and then make it greater than or equal to zero. So let's see how that works. So delta from here is gonna be b squared, which is four minus four times a, which is two, times c, which is one minus a, don't forget, a, one minus a is a constant. And we want this to be greater than or equal to zero for real solutions, right? For real. So let's simplify this, shall we? This gives us four minus eight plus eight a is greater than or equal to zero. And this means eight a minus four is greater than or equal to zero. Let's solve this inequality and find an interval for a. Now, this gives us eight a is greater than or equal to four. If you add four to both sides and divide by eight, simplify, you're gonna get a is less than, I mean, greater than or equal to one half. So this needs to be satisfied this needs to be satisfied and this needs to be satisfied. A lot of requirements, right? We're gonna put it all together. Yes, I know it looks complicated, but don't worry, we're gonna fix it real quick, okay? Now, since we know what interval x needs to be on, let's start with that. So let's go ahead and first consider the fact that x is greater than or equal to one. What does that mean though? Wait a minute, before I get into this, I forgot, I forgot to write the solutions. I get too excited, I guess. Remember the quadratic formula that we had, 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus a equals 0. Now, using the quadratic formula, we can go ahead and write it, but we know the discriminant already, so negative b plus minus the square root of delta, which is 4a, 8, mi no, wait a minute, 8a minus 4, and divided by 2a, which is 4, and we can definitely simplify this a little bit. Take out a 4, that'll be a 2. Inside, you have 2a minus 1, and all of that is divided by 4. And now you can go ahead and divide everything by 2. That gives you 1 plus minus the square root of 2a minus 1 all over 2. So these are the solutions. But wait a minute. There are two solutions. Which one are we going to use? Let's go ahead and take a look. So first, I want to use the requirement that x is greater than or equal to 1. Which solution am I going to use? Let's just use the one with the plus sign. So suppose x1 is equal to this, okay? But the million dollar question is, this 
is the x value. And of course, we do have a requirement that x is uh, greater or equal to 1, right? So we want this to be greater than or equal to 1. But here's the problem. If you start with the 1 with the minus sign, the issue is you're going to have something like this. Because two, square root of a, 2a minus 1 is a positive quantity, remember that. If you subtract that from 1, you'll get a quantity that is less than 1, right? This is less than 1. And then if you divide it by 2, it's still going to be less than 1. But not only that, it's going to be less than 1 half. Because its numerator, this one right here, is less than or equal to 1. So the fraction will be less than or equal to 1 half. But 1 half is less than 1. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? Well, I'm just saying that this means x sub 1 is less than 1, but you don't want that. x needs to be greater than or equal to 1. In other words, in other words, x equals 1 minus the square root of 2a minus 1 over 2 is not a solution. We cannot accept that because it's not greater than or equal to 1. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and test the other solution. How about this one? Is this going to work? And if it doesn't work either, then we have no solutions. But hopefully we're going to get something out of this, right? We want x to be greater or equal to 1, which means this expression right here needs to be greater than or equal to 1. Is that going to work? Let's find out. Multiply by 2, cross multiply. You're going to get this. Subtract 1 from both sides. You're going to get that. Finally, square both sides, almost finally. You're going to get that. Add 1 to both sides. You're going to get that. And ta-da, this implies a must be greater than or equal to 1. And what does that mean? This means for every a value that satisfies this, we have x greater than or equal to 1. So this must be satisfied, right? Okay, good. Just remember that because this is needed for x to be greater or equal to 1. The other solution already failed, so don't worry about it. But now, now this is satisfied. Now, here's the next thing we need to do. We got to check, okay, for, check for, x squared is less than or equal to a, when a is greater than or equal to 1. I know this is a little confusing, so bear with me. Here's what we're going to do. We need to check that this is satisfied when a is on that interval. Does that make sense? But what is x? x is the only solution we found. Remember, x sub 2 was 1 plus the square root of 2a minus 1 divided by 2. Now, we need to square both sides because we need x squared, right? So this means x squared, and just drop the subscript. You don't really need that because we only have one solution. Square the top. And of course, don't forget uh, the formula, right? And all of that is divided by 4. These two cancel out. Let's simplify this a little bit. x squared becomes 2a. And if you divide everything by 2a plus the square root of 2a minus 1 all over 2. Now remember, this is x squared, right? And you want this to be what? We want x squared to be less than or equal to a. Okay, great. Let's put it in there and find out for which a values this is going to be true. You know why we're doing this? Because we need to make sure that this is satisfied when a is greater or equal to 1. I mean, a must be greater or equal to 1, don't get me wrong, but we also need to satisfy this because, remember, it was one of the initial requirements, right? But it's easy because all you have to do is solve this inequality. You understand the complications, the level of complications needed for this, for, like, artificial intelligence to handle? Anyways, but humans can handle this for sure, right? Let's go ahead and do this. Cross multiply. It's okay because uh, 2 is greater than 0, so it's fine. And then, like, put uh, a or subtract a from both sides. And finally, ta-da, you must square both sides. Now, you might be thinking, okay, is this okay? Because when you square both sides, you might be introducing extraneous solutions. But guess what? a is greater or equal to 1, so a is definitely positive. This is not going to be an issue. You see, a lot of details you need to keep track of. Sorry about that. But if you square this, you get the following. Wow, that's really cool, isn't it? Now, what does this mean, though? Let's put everything on the same side. This means a squared minus 2a plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. But guess what? This is a perfect square, and ju that's just perfect. Everything is awesome, right? This is always satisfied, right? No exceptions. So, which means for this, for a greater or equal to 1, this is satisfied. Isn't that nice? So now, 
Here's what you can do too. x squared is a plus the square root of 2a minus 1 divided by 2, right? Now here's one thing you need to keep in mind. This gives you 2a minus 1, right, is less than or equal to a squared. So 2a minus 1 is also less than or equal to a. You know why? Because a is less than or equal to 1. Actually, that's not true, is it? No, never mind. Never mind. You don't need to worry about this. I'm confusing myself. But anyways, it's been satisfied. So it's really cool. This is always true, right? And this comes from this. Remember that? So when a is greater or equal to 1, this is satisfied, and a needs to be on that interval. Okay? So let's go ahead and write the solution. Here's the conclusion. I know that's confusing, but let's go ahead and put it all together and ask questions. If this is not very clear, hopefully someone will clarify. So here's the result. If a is greater than or equal to 1, then x is 1 plus the square root of 2a minus 1 all over 2. If a is less than 1, then no solutions or no real solutions. But this is a good question. Are there complex solutions? That's for you to check. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI, and bye-bye.